The plights of a community are seldom understood by those on the outside looking in. And those who understand this write satire. Okay, you had me go on there for the first part. The second half kind of threw me. What's the point in understanding if it comes short of empathy? I get it. 2000s television was plagued by situational comedies that conformed to a strict friends formula consisting of a cast of relatable characters in a familiar setting where inevitably hijinks ensues before returning to normal by the end of its 30 minute runtime. A safe and proven recipe for success. Oh, milk steak. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What? Showrunner milk and steak. creator of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Rob McLeaney, understood this form. Milk steak, put milk steak, she'll know what it is. No, she won't know what it is, Charlie, nobody knows what that is. The FX show has spanned 15 seasons since 2005, having its origins in a short film written and produced by Rob McLeaney. I had this idea for uh, a short film that I thought would be pretty funny, and I just wrote a couple of scenes. It was about a guy going over to a friend's house to get sugar for his coffee, because he ran out of sugar. His friend's like, yeah, I haven't told anybody, but I have cancer, and you know, you're really the only person I can talk to. And he's like, ooh, yeah, well, you know, we probably should talk about that at some point. The show follows the gang, Dennis, D, Mac, Charlie, and Frank, as they commit racism, identity theft, exploit friends and family, steal, and lie their way through the course of the series. These are not meant to be relatable characters. They're meant to be terrible people. This formula must keep from going stale, so the series has a pattern of including out-of-genre episodes, one of these being The Gang Turns Black. Hear me out. The episode has been critiqued for its shallow depiction of the black experience, covering topics such as profiling, African-American vernacular English, and impoverishment. Though these critics view the episode from an intrinsically black perspective, when the episode is written from a white one. What are the rules? Oh Christ, I'm singing again. What are the rules? When you've just turned black and you can't switch back, well, you gotta go and find out the rules. The episode critiques cultural appropriations and stereotypes that are adopted by privileged communities, which are subsequently bastardized and separated from the community's true afflictions, like police brutality, profiling, and impoverishment, while idolizing things like African-American vernacular English, fashion, and a sense of community. Where are you going with this, Frank? I'm going to say homie. Oh, come on. I'm going to say bro. Are you serious? I'm going to say my babe. Well, now you're just stereotyping. I'm going to say folk show. Okay. I'm going to say the n -word. No, 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 stop, stop, what? stop, stop. Why? Thank you, no. What? The episode follows a television musical format laid out by scholar Mary Jo Lodge. The episode is a book musical a production where the music and dance are fully integrated into the narrative and play a role in progressing the narrative's dramatic goals. This can be seen with the musical number, What Are the Rules?, which states the gang's motive of finding out how to switch back and is reprised when the gang returns to compare their experiences and stereotypical I Want song, aptly dubbed, I Wanna Go Home. Our home, white home, just say home, we really, really wanna go home. Secondly, the episode exhibits characteristics of a heightened reality wherein the surreal nature of breaking out into song and dance is justified saying that the scenario is outlandish and viewers must suspend their disbelief given that there is an explanation as to why the characters are acting so musically spontaneous. Lastly, a return to normalcy, which can be seen in the episode's conclusion where it is revealed the whole episode was a dream and the gang has learned nothing, as per the usual conclusion of the series. Because, I must reiterate, these are meant to be terrible people. The episode follows this criteria to take advantage of the sense of heightened reality, Seeing that the series is otherwise based in our own reality, the only satirical and digestible way the episode could make a social commentary without being, quote, too preachy, was through a campy musical episode that falls in line with the series' other out-of-genre specials and overall aesthetic. This allows them to explore the absurdity of how racial dynamics have previously been treated in popular culture from the characters' naive perspectives without feeling out of place compared to the rest of the series. The topics they do explore have been previously critiqued by scholar Carol Clover, who argues that musicals possess historically white-centric roots and have been guilty of appropriating black culture. Clover says the following in reference to the musical Singing in the Rain and its appropriation of black dance from performer Bojangles Robinson. One could hardly ask for a plainer expression of the speaker's desire to be as good as black. White men can too dance. Clover is insinuating that musicals have checkered pasts of theft that has led to eras of white guilt and appropriation, and Always Sunny runs with this after observing a recent trend of chauvinistic racial dynamics and satirizing their surface level and naive traits such as not jumping to conclusions. A realization so surface level it might as well have been ripped out of a children's picture book. The episode's critics have flat out ignored the naive nature of their white perspective, when this is in fact the centric joke of the episode. The gang tries and fails to understand the black experience after literally being placed in their shoes because their perspective is still skewed by what they think it means to be black and surface level conclusions even after being shot by a police officer who was guilty of the same racial profiling the gang had previously exhibited, connoting that even if an individual were to understand, it would not change anything systemic. 
This makes the episode's satire centered around white guilt, cultural appropriation, and depictions of chauvinistic racial dynamics in popular culture in order to acknowledge and move beyond progress that has been prescribed by the privileged. 